Back in episode 19, I addressed a topic which, at the time, I would imagine was new to many of you, which is simply the topic of value management. Value management is an emerging discipline, particularly in the tech industry, but really broadly across all of B2B, where suppliers partner collaboratively with their customers to understand as best as they possibly can, not just the metrics of value that come from that partnership, but the dimensions along which they want to measure value. So what are the objectives, the tactics, the metrics, the targets, the timelines along which we are going to essentially create a framework to measure this this collaboration, this partnership, and then track that over time. Today, I want to talk to you about another term that's emerging and emerging very rapidly. It's, it's not completely new. It's been around for a couple of years, but the amount of focus and attention that has been placed on this idea, uh, particularly in the last couple of years, and especially in account management and customer success, I think bears uh, some attention. And that term is value realization. So the whole idea here is it's sort of the the downstream or at least a subcomponent of value management more broadly. And it is this downstream idea, downstream being in, in sort of the sales and success and expansion funnel, the, the commercial funnel, of helping customers understand the degree to which they have actually realized the value that they had initially anticipated in working with a supplier or perhaps more broadly in pursuing a particular course of action. And I think it it really bears um, some focus to think about sort of what does world-class value realization look like. And in some ways, it'll be the same kinds of themes that we've talked about uh, in earlier episodes, because for value realization to really work, it's you know, right now it's largely being deployed in the customer success function. So one of the ways that, whether it's account management or just uh, customer success, th- that is those, that part of your team, whatever you may call it, that is working with current customers to renew those relationships and expand them over time. It's an effort to demonstrate that, look how valuable this relationship has been up to this point. It's probably something we'd probably want to consider continuing or maybe even expanding over time. And so it it kind of stands to reason, doesn't it, that we, in order for that conversation to go well, the customers have to feel comfortable that they're actually getting value from that real that 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 relationship, that they realize that value, such that it makes sense to continue. So, sure, all that makes sense. Now, here is the thing where this kind of falls apart sometimes in a lot of organizations, whether it's on the so- selling side or the buying side, account me a supplier or customer, and that is really the the story, the idea, the the discipline, the practice of value realization really isn't about one thing. It's about two things. In other words, you can't really realize value until you've actually defined value in the first place. And of course, the challenge really is that the definition of value and the realization of value happen asynchronously. They happen at different points in time, sometimes separated by, if not months, even years or at least quarters. Um, and more to the point, the people who are defining the value aren't always the people who are de- determining whether or not that value is realized, both on the supplier side and the customer side. So you may have a sales team selling into the procurement department and a buying group uh, that sets out the dimensions of value along which that relationship will be measured. And then it gets passed on to maybe a project management office for installation, if it's tech, for example. And then an end user group that ultimately uses it will determine whether or not that was valuable, but they're going to determine make that determination in conjunction with the supplier's account management team who wasn't involved in the original sale. And then the whole thing kind of falls apart, doesn't it? For two reasons. One is because all those groups are different, but two, because that first step never even happened in the first place. And so you begin, as you step back and really look at the the, the promise of value realization, you begin to realize in order to make this work, we have to think in a, in a from a systems perspective, right? We need to think about not just how our success team can have better conversations with our current customer stakeholders, but from a systems perspective across time, across our teams, sales, sales engineering, pre-sales, uh, 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 installation, customer success, account management, and on the customer side, you know, the buying team, the procurement team, the PMO, the installation team, the user team, uh, and then in that boundary span and connection across all of that, somehow there needs to be, first of all, focus on defining those dimensions of value in the first place. And, and as I've addressed in previous episodes, not just in sort of what are your outcomes, but what are the outcomes you're trying to achieve and why do they matter? So what are your objectives that those outcomes are meant to address? What are the tactics you'll pursue to achieve those outcomes? And what are the metrics we'll use to measure them and the targets we'll set to determine our success? And of course, the timeline along which we want to do that. 
it's a lot, right? And and that to do that from one team and then somehow find some place to put that on a shelf, but only temporarily because it needs to be reviewed on an ongoing basis and it needs to be transferred from one group to another across time, across uh, boundaries, our company to the customer company and across teams inside their own organization. And that's why we've begun to really describe what we do at Ecosystems as, as a revenue operating system or revenue OS, because it really provides as a platform a means to make all that happen, whether it's you know, the Ecosystems platform or something else, one way or another, I think we all need some sort of means, and hopefully not just a spreadsheet on your C drive, um, to to initiate that conversation, to guide customers in that conversation, to to use what we know to align customer stakeholders in that conversation at the beginning, but then to align that group who's made that agreement with the group that they're going to turn it over to, and then over time for the group that's actually going to make the ultimate decision on whether to renew that relationship or even to expand it going forward. So value realization I think is actually a much bigger topic than for those who are talking about it today. It's a much bigger topic than most of us let on. It's, you know, it, it seems to be described as a tool for our account managers to make sure that they can drive renewals and maybe even uh, uh, increase the likelihood of expansion. What I think it really is, is um, it, it's the tip of the iceberg of a much broader set of disciplines that need to all be moving together in lockstep such that over time, your company and your customer company are building collaboratively a common vision of what they're even trying to do in the first place, what value even means in a way that's consistent uh, and persistent uh, such that it can be revisited and maybe even expanded upon uh, over time. And that ultimately, I think, is the best way that you and your customers over time realize value.